580 watts. It is half past eight in the morning on this wonderful and beautiful cloudy day. This is what we had the last four or five days. Clouds, rain, amazing for my solar production. With these clouds out there, I'm making twice as much energy as in pure sunshine. That is just incredible. Anyway, guys, welcome back to another video here from the off grid garage in cloudy, nice Australia. In this morning's video, I am, um, well, in the last video, I actually promised you to unpack the mystery BMS and install it on the Frankenstein battery. I have to delay this one a little bit because there are some technical issues. Some stuff is not quite working and I have to wait for the manufacturer to get back to me. So there is a bit of a delay, unfortunately. But so far the experience, not good. And because quite a few people have left comments under the last couple of videos and wanted me to show you some more details in regards to home assistant and automation of solar systems. So I probably want to start a series here of videos where I explain how to set up home assistant and monitor the energy consumption and production. And because home assistant is an infinite whole, we don't want to really talk about anything else in home assistant, but only the energy side of things. And yes, you can do similar things with Node Red as well, which is part of the Victron Venus OS Large. But I had a look in Venus OS a couple of times, and I think the entry point, especially for beginners, is a lot higher than Home Assistant. And so far, I have connected my Fronius inverter, my all my Victron equipment, the Shelly devices, and also all the Sonoff devices. And I have never, never, ever done any coding, scripting or programming in Home Assistant. This was all done by the UI. Just click here and click there, set up the integrations and it is all working fine. And this is actually what I expect from a beginner friendly installation. And now you can do a lot more if you go into scripting and coding with Home Assistant, but we don't want to go there. We want to keep it simple, nice and functional. So in today's video, I want to quickly show you how to integrate your solar inverter into Home Assistant and read all the data, all the sensors inside, so current voltages, energy production, all this kind of stuff. So as a requirement for this, you have to have Home Assistant installed on some devices. There are so many possibilities you can run Home Assistant. I'll put some links how to get started with Home Assistant under the video here. I personally have installed mine on an Intel NAC computer. It runs inside the house, but it also works on a Raspberry Pi and, and many other platforms. Well, you probably would ask, why would you integrate your solar inverter into Home Assistant? If you want to set up some automations in your system, it is crucial to get all the information from your power generation as well as from your power consumption into one spot and then make decision, make rules. For example, if the power output of your inverter is over three and a half kilowatt, turn on the EV charger, turn on your hot water, turn on the washing machine. Very simple things like this. And this all can be realized very, very easily without coding, without scripting, programming with Home Assistant. And I want to show you the integration of the Fronius Gen 24 inverter I have installed at my house for a couple of months now into Home Assistant. And it is very, very easy. Similar processes are also available for the Growatt inverters and the D inverters. Basically, any inverter you want to connect to Home Assistant, there is a solution either directly in Home Assistant or at a GitHub site. And you just follow the instructions to integrate your inverter. And we will connect the inverter to Home Assistant through our Wi-Fi network. So here I have already logged into my inverter via the local IP address. And it gives me only basic information. You can see here in the menu, all the other functions are currently locked. So with the Fronius inverter, you have to log in to the web interface of the inverter. You can do this either as a customer or as a technician. The customer login will be totally sufficient for our needs. And you should have these details from your installer. So once you are logged in, all the functions are now unlocked. And the first thing we want to do is go into our communication and have a look at the network. It is very important that you have a fixed or static IP address set for your inverter. 
So it doesn't change when you restart your router or when your internet is down and comes back and your devices are getting a different IP address. So all these devices you are pulling information from, they should have a fixed IP address. Otherwise, you have to reconfigure the integration in Home Assistant every time. You can either do this via a static IP address directly in your inverter, or if you leave it on automatic, you can also do this on the other side in your router and set an IP address reservation. I'll put a link how this works under the video as well. It's always easier if you just use the static function and put IP address and subnet mask in manually. So my Fronios Gen 24 is connected via Wi-Fi to my network and it has a fixed IP address through my router. So once you have done this, I have also the option here in the Fronios inverter to turn on my solar API. And this basically gives third party applications access to the data of the inverter. So they are now able to connect to the inverter via this static IP address and read all the data. It also says it here in the note as well. And if you have a different inverter than the Fronius, you will most likely have a very similar option, like an API you can activate in your inverter to give Home Assistant access to all the information. Okay, here in the off-grid garage, I have installed a second instance of Home Assistant, which runs in a Oracle Virtual Machine Virtual Box. I followed some instructions I found online. I linked this down below under the video as well, just in case you want to run your Home Assistant in a virtual machine so it doesn't affect any of your other installations on your computer. And we start Home Assistant now on the system here. And once your Home Assistant has started and it shows this page here, we can then connect to Home Assistant via any web browser on our network by either using this URL or the IP address 10.0.0.10 in my case. So once again, I have set an IP address reservation in my router for this test environment of Home Assistant. So we go back to our browser. Okay, now we can connect to Home Assistant. It wants me to log in. Mr. Andy, I test password and I say, keep me logged in. And there we go. We are logged into Home Assistant for the very first time. You can see it has uh, three cards in here, my name, the weather and the sun. So the first thing you want to do in Home Assistant is go to your profile and turn on advanced mode. This gives you all the functionality which we will need once we have um, integrated the Fronius inverter to our system. So turn this one on. To get the Fronius or your Crobot or D or whatever inverter you have into Home Assistant, click on settings, go to devices and services. And you can see, oh, it has just found all my air conditions. <laughs> see, and this is the beauty of version 10 of Home Assistant. It searches on your network what devices you have and integrates them automatically if it can. It has found my Shelly Energy Monitor, for example, and all my air conditioning, they pop up automatically without me doing anything. But we want to concentrate on the Fronius. So we go to Add Integrations and we just search for Fronius. Once I start typing, it shows up Fronius. And now we need to make the connection between Home Assistant and your Fronius inverter. And here it is important to have this static IP address. So I'm typing in the IP address of my Fronius inverter. Again, here on the network, I can see IP address 10.0.0.200. And this is exactly what I'm typing in here to connect my Fronius. I click on submit. Takes a few seconds. I can also set up an area where my, where my inverter is located. I'm not doing this right now. And now you can see the Fronius has already integrated into Home Assistant. One device means we've got one inverter and 13 entities. That means we've got 13 data sources or 13 sensors we can access now. And we can click on them. AC voltage, frequency, AC current, AC power, DC current, DC, all this kind of stuff, error codes, inverter state, energy, um, solar meter mode. All this is available now in Home Assistant and we can work with this data. You can also see some of the entities, some of the sensors are disabled by default for whatever reason, but I want them all. So click on the disabled icon, click on the setting and enable it. 
Yes. Update. Okay. I do the same here. So all the sensors are now activated. We've got access to everything, all the data. And when we go back to our overview page or our main dashboard, is it called? So we can see now a new card here for the Fronius inverter. It is called sensors for some reason. It gives us some of the information of the inverter already in a live view. And we also have a second card here called SolarNet. Well, and this concludes the integration of the Fronius inverter into Home Assistant. That is how easy it is. And uh, if we go back to settings and go into devices and services and go to add integration and you type in Growbot, you can see you can find the Growbot inverter integration in the same way. However, this one works a bit different. You can see the little cloud symbol here. This one does not connect to your local IP address. This one actually connects to the Growbot portal online. And once you click on the integration, it wants you to sign in with the Growbot credentials. But you can see down here, it uses actually an online API to get the information from your inverter. So your inverter sends the information to the Growbot server on, online, and then you grab the information from there back into Home Assistant. And as always, if you need more information about how to integrate your specific inverter into Home Assistant, you can always click on the question mark here, which opens a separate website and gives you all the information how to configure and how to integrate your inverter into Home Assistant. And you just Google Home Assistant and your inverter brand and you will find a solution, either directly as an integration in Home Assistant or as an add-on repository from GitHub. Or, for example, you could search for the um, SMA integration. There's SMA Solar. So they can be integrated directly into Home Assistant as well. The Victor integration is a bit more tricky, but I'll show you this in a future video. It is actually not hard to do. It just needs some additional steps. But again, no programming, no coding, no scripting, nothing. It is just done here by the UI. And it works beautifully with Home Assistant. <laughs> by the way, we are producing 2.3 kilowatt. 2.3 kilowatt. There's no sun, nothing. It's just clouds. Look at this. Perfect weather. I bet we will get four kilowatt peak today. In the second step, I quickly want to show you how to change the data format and the data resolution of our Fronius inverter here. So you can see we've got 6.2182 amps. I mean, uh, that's a bit too much, right? So you just click on the AC current, for example, and it starts already making this nice curve here of our current. Click on the settings button. This menu appears. You can change the name of this sensor as well as the icon. Measurement unit is amps. And down here we have the resolution or the display precision, they are calling it. Click on it. And here you can select how fine you want to have your resolution. So this would give us only the full amps, while this one gives us 100 milliamps resolution as well. Select this one, click on update, and there we go. We have 5.4 amps. And we do the same with the power because this is actually displayed in watts. Go in here, click on the settings change the unit to kilowatts and change the precision to and probably change this one to uh, 0.1 kilowatt. Okay, so you've got 1.1 kilowatt and you do the same here, especially the total consumption is in watt hours. And this is a fairly high number and they give you four numbers after the decimal point as well. So we quickly want to change this one here to kilowatt hours and basically just the full numbers. There we go, 812 kilowatt hours. And you can do this for all the other numbers as well if you want to. And there we go, we have easily integrated our Fronius Gen 24 AC coupled inverter into Home Assistant and we can now work with this information here. And in future videos, we want to integrate the Victron system as well to the Home Assistant as well as the Sonoff devices without flashing to a Tasmoda and also our Shelly energy monitor so we can see how much power we actually still use from the grid, how much we produce here and how much we store in our battery. And this will give us an overall dashboard situation of all our energy consumption, production, all our loads, solar panels, everything into one dashboard. And then we can very easily integrate automation into this system. And this is all done without coding, programming or scripting, just by using Home Assistant and some integrations. I'll show you how this works. 
All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support, your wonderful and beautiful people out there. Special thanks to many people who are donating on a regular base now. Thank you very much for that. And as always, guys, until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Huh? I told you, we're getting the 4 kilowatt today. Okay, almost. There it is. 4 kilowatt. Insane! Cloudy sky in winter.